My name's Matty McFaddy. I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about something called XML external entity attacks. I like to call it the XML backdoor. Um, I've been working with Trust Foundry for about a little more than a year. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's the nation's best uh, security consulting agency in the entire world. So uh, check us out. Um, and so XML sucks, it's boring, right? But what if I told you that many XML parsers have uh, a, a thing called external entities that they can load that offers almost an XML backdoor? No way. Way. Um, every time I'm running a test and I see XML, I get kind of a little tiny nerd boner because the impact is so huge. Um, you can get lots of stuff from this. Um, and Alex just had an... Uh, uh, Engagement, I think, what three weeks ago, where you, uh, where you, it was a pretty here. You tell tell them a little bit about it. All right, sure. Uh, yeah, so I, I can definitely. The excitement we get when we see an XML request is pretty indescribable. Like it's like, oh, I can't wait to see if this thing is vulnerable to XXC because it's kind of like the there's like the OAuth top ten. This is, oh, the XXC is like the trust boundary top one. Like it right. is, we compromise some serious shit a lot every, you know, every, every maybe two months, I don't know, between, between the two of us uh, on uh, uh, using XXC. So we, it's, it's awesome. We, we get giddy every time. And then if we get further down the path, further down the path, and it's, it's, it's awesome. So anyway, to tell the, tell the story about the most recent one. Yeah, it was a financial. Uh, yeah, it was a real serious uh Web service really locked down, had been tested year after year after year after year. Basically, it was looking at kind of a no findings. I mean, it was going to be kind of just a few findings, just some low level stuff. And it had like 250 web service requests and a number of, or then I, then I finally found one that had XML and I got, got so excited and looked at it and it was a, a, a vulnerable to XXT. Um, through multiple steps, just figure that out with it. Matt's going to explain to you, and was able to pull down. I, th I think I, I wrote a little Python script, which automated the attack. So I, I, I grabbed all the, the common file systems off of a uh, Linux box. Sorry, I'm probably making you talk too long. <laughs> um, and uh, and and automated so I, I took a, like a, a default install uh, Linux box and, and automated that and requested all those files and got a ton of sensitive stuff. I pulled down like a gig or two off this very sensitive web service. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a really cool, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really cool finding. So you guys should definitely pay attention um, to, if you're, if you're interested in exploiting it or defending against it, it's definitely good stuff. Thanks, Alex. Um, and like you said, every parser is a little bit different. So what is it? I hope you guys can see it. Um, XML specification, um, allows for entity declaration. Um, and this allows the XML documents to be a little more dynamic. They're almost like variables. So you see that first one has an entity uh, called uh, y, YN. And so that second uh, entity right there would resolve to, let me show you, hopefully. Okay, so it resolves to what he said is yes. So you can kind of see how the variables are combined uh, to create that sentence there. And the one underneath, uh, I hope you can see that foobar, that the F entity and the bar entity would combine to put the foobar element in the element element. That was awkward to say. Um, so who's affected? There's lots of apps that use XML. Um, lots of them, uh, lots of formats rely on XML, lots of configuration files for tools you use every day use XML. And protocols like SOAP uh, is, a, is kind of a flavor of XML, and some of them use it without even knowing it. I had an engagement that was a JSON web service um, that on a hunch I tried submitting XML instead of JSON, and it digested it, and uh, it was vulnerable to XXE. So uh, I, I'm sure the coders didn't even realize that, that their JSON parser would, would take XML. Um, and so who cares? Well, you should care, attackers should care, because you can define an external entity, so you can see this one is defining the XXE element that's going to attacker.com. So I can include, I can make calls out from your XML parser to an attacker controlled domain. 
Um, and so is this. This is a valid XXE declaration. And you can see that one's trying to include the local file Etsy password. If you guys have been on Linux, you know that's bad. Um, so what can you exploit? Um, you can do denial of service with something like this. This is called the billion laughs attack. Um, what that does is it includes entity within entity within entity. Um, and when you expand that, it's, a, it's over a million LOLs. Um, file enumeration, so you can specify some file on the system to see if it exists. Network enumeration, kind of the same thing, but you can specify a local network that's behind the firewall um, to see if it exists. Port scanning is kind of the same thing, but with a port uh, specified on the system. Directory listing, uh, some parsers like that one Alex was talking about uh, actually listed the directories for him as he was going through. Um, so he just, he just had to automate downloading the files. And then file exfiltration, um, if the service doesn't reflect the file back out, you can do exfiltration by combining the fact that I can load an attacker controlled website and a local file. So you can put those two together to make the call to the attacker website include a parameter of your file. So you can, you can exfiltrate data that way. And sometimes this happens without auth. Um, I had an engagement where it was, a, it was a web service, they were doing everything right. They had an auth token that changed. Um, but the problem was the auth token was an XML element. So it had to run through the XML parser for them to figure out who I was. And the parser was vulnerable, so I had uh, file exfiltration without any authentication whatsoever. Um, okay, so here's a demo, hopefully. Um, Sorry it's taking so long. Um, let's see, okay, I'm gonna set the mic down. Come on, demo guys. Okay, so there's Burp. If you guys are not familiar with Burp, you should get familiar with it. And there's a website, or half of one. Um, and this is just uh, like a mailing list that you're signing up for, right? On the left, and then Burp Scanner on the right. There is not a lot of space on this screen, I'm really sorry. Um, so the way Burp Scanner works, if you guys aren't familiar with it, um, as I make requests, on the left, you can see they're proxying through on the right, so I can see the request coming through on the right. Um, so I, I'm testing this web service, la di da, and I s submit a post, and I'm, I look at the request, and it's XML. And guess what? I just got a nerd boner. Um, so I want to see if it's vulnerable to XXE. Um, I'm going to do the short version instead of the long version, because um, I, I, I made this proof of concept, so I know it is. All this, all this does is, when you submit something, it says, sorry, that name is already taken down there at the very bottom. Um, so I'm looking at this request, it's XML, the response is, sorry, that name is already taken. Um, so I want to see if it will accept an entity declaration. Sorry, I'm copying and pasting. Pay no attention to the magician behind the screen. Okay, so I'm putting it right here. Hopefully. Okay, so the parser looked, it, I, I sent this request and it came back and it looks like it digested it just fine. Um, what would be really awesome is if this foo element would be reflected back out in the response. That, that would mean we're in the money. So I'm, behind my name here, I'm gonna put that variable and see if it'll come back. And see, it says that name is already taken. Matt South, XXE! So that's awesome, that's reflecting variables back out from the XML parser. So here's, here's the sweet spot. If we can do, uh, if we can do a file on the system, then we'll, we'll be in the money. Sorry, this is really hard to do one-handed, you guys don't even know. 
Okay, that didn't work. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Oh, yeah. So there's the Etsy password file reflected back out from the XML parser. Woo! Woo! Okay. Take my money now. Let me, yeah, let me wrap it up and then I'll let you guys off the hook. So the question is, how do you stop it? Um, coders uh, in the past have just said, okay, let's not reflect stuff back out. So that Etsy password file, they're like, let's not do that. Well, that didn't work because um, there's error messages, so I can tell whether a file exists based on different error messages. Um, even if you have the same error message come back, um, based on the response timings, like it might take longer to parse a file that exists versus a file that doesn't exist, so I can enumerate files that way. And then uh, these guys, Timur and Alexi, uh, developed, they did a Black Hat talk about the out-of-band attack that I told you about earlier, where you combine the fact that you can make external calls with an internal file attached to it. Um, so let's try that again. How do you stop it? Um, a lot of parser libraries added the option to disable it, uh, XXE. That didn't work because um, most people have never heard of this. Um, so a lot of coders didn't go out of their way to disable it because they didn't know it existed. So, third time's the charm. A lot of parsers disable it by default. And that seems to work pretty good, provided your libraries are up to date. For this proof of concept, I had to download Django that was two years old. So, if your app's more than two years old and it uses XML, it's probably vulnerable to this. And, okay, so in summary, XML's all over the place, XXE's super bad. Uh, if you're defending, make sure it's not vulnerable. If you're attacking, um, check for it because it's really sweet if you find it. And that's it. I'm at South. Um, lots of people have talked about this kind of stuff ahead of me. So, um, yeah, this wasn't my idea. Anyways, thanks, guys. Whoa. Good job, Matty McFaddy. I'm going to turn it over to you, Alex. Yeah, I just wanted to, wanted to mention one more thing that, like, uh, I, I've never had a scanner find it. Have you, have you Matt? So yeah, scanners don't find it. You know, even Burp, which is a freaking awesome scanner, doesn't find it. Well, it has one check for it, but for whatever reason, it never works. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, it's kind of complex to test for. Oh yeah, um, I, I made a little, do you guys know what fuzzing is? Has anyone ever heard of fuzzing inputs? Um, it's where you take uh, different types of attack payloads and try to fuzz an input and see if it's vulnerable. I made a list for XXE fuzzing that I'll make available to the mailing list, because um, I've never found one anywhere. I had to build this, so I'm gonna share it with you guys if you wanna try it out. Oh, and the proof of concept, I'll upload too if you guys wanna play with it. Um, so look on the mailing list tomorrow or whenever. Thanks. Yep, uh, and, and so scanners aren't good at finding it. I mean, it's difficult to, it's difficult to find in an automated fashion because it can kind of have to craft XML request to, to work uh, in the way you want it, and, and also, um, Pen tester, like the, so, the Web Application Hacker's Handbook is pretty much the go-to reference on web application pen testing. I don't think even think it mentions it. Like, it's it was kind of a, a obscure vulnerability until more recently, which is why I mean, why every time we find it, I mean, every it, it wasn't found on the previous year's test. It's becoming more and more prevalent. Just I mean, maybe like SQL injection was 15 years ago or something like that. It's it's a it's a big deal right now, and uh, so it's important that you have people that are aware of it testing your applications because definitely good uh, good people can find it. So uh, 
it's uh, yeah, you need you need the right tools in place. You need to be looking for this because as as Matt showed, even if you're just accepting JSON unauthenticated, you can be vulnerable to a authenticated XML attack. So cool stuff. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, Joel, go watch. Do you know if anybody's come up with a snort rule for detecting that in line? I have no idea if someone has a snort rule for that. It's uh, I mean, Burp Scanner's got a rule that it. Uh, Burp Scanner, the newest version, has a rule that'll do a simple check, but each parser's different, so you kind of—it's almost something you have to manually test. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it would be difficult to test for on the defensive side, but I guess if you're looking for the right payload, uh, it's possible. I guess I have no idea if there's a there's a snort rule that though for it. So, question? Any questions? All right, thanks. Hand over to Bill. All right, thanks, Matty McFatty. Thanks, Bill. Awesome job. All right, we're going to take about a five minute break while I get set up, and then we'll go from there.